Hello mga classmates and welcome again sa ating YouTube channel. Sa video natin ngayon, pag-uusapan natin kung ano nga ba ang Linux at open source at kung bakit mo nito mag-aral nito. Pero bago tayo magsimula at kung interesado ka sa mga gaitong videos, i-click lang ang subscribe button at hit ang bell icon para ma-notify ka sa mga future uploads natin. So, ano nga ba ang objective natin sa topic na to mga classmates? Well, para magkaroon ng beneficial foundation at opportunity to step up. Pag alam mo na ang Linux at kung madami kang competition sa company, sa school, or sa mga vendor support, kapag marunong ka mag-Linux, it should be basic na actually. Halimbawa, nasaba ka sa real world, at may biglang pa-project yung company na required eh, Linux skills, eh di pasok ka sa banga. ba? Diba? <laughs> Sino ba mag-benefit niyan? ba diba? yung company? Siyempre, ikaw. So, I hope na makakatulong tong tutorial natin para mag-step up ka kung trip mong maging sysad or DevOps. Ano nga ba ang Linux? Well, gaya ng Windows at Mac, isa rin itong operating system. Isa ito sa famous example ng free software and development to open source. Pero di gaya ng ibang operating system, yung Windows at Mac, yung code ng Linux ay eh, available sa public para magamit, ma-modify, at ma-redistribute ng libre. Na pala, ang gumawa ng Linux ay si Linus Torvalds. College lang siya noon nung ginawa niya yung Linux. Mamaya, ipapakita ko sa inyo yung history ng Linux at ang buhay ni Linus Torvald sa maliit niyang office. So, ano nga ba ang operating system at kernel? Ang operating system ay isang software na naglalaman ng mga iba't ibang klase ng programs. Well, kasama na dyan yung kernel na which is yun yung Linux. Linux is a kernel. Mamaya, explain ko yan. So, dito mo tayo sa operating system. Ang isang OS ay binubuo ng uh, bootloader or startup. Sa Linux, kung tawagin yun ay grab. Ito yung nagload ng mga kailangan mong iran sa simula pa lang bago dumating sa OS. Gaya ng Linux, ng Windows, ng Mac. Yung pag binuksan mo yung computer mo, inload nyo yung keyboard, yung mouse, yung hard drive, or kung ano-ano pang inload nyan. Next naman yung daemons. Hindi ito yung mga nahuhuli ng asawa na niloloko, yung mga kung tawagin nila, eh, demonyo ka. <laughs> ito yung daemons, ito yung running services na necessary pag nag-run ka ng operating system. Uh, hindi mo ito nakikita kasi nag-run to behind the system. Okay, uh, next is yung shell. Hindi ito yung gasolinahan, ha. <laughs> shell, ito yung interpreter. Siya yung nakikipag-communicate sa operating system. Next is yung graphical server. Sa Linux, tinatawag itong X. Yeah. Next naman is yung desktop environment. Siya yung Windows Manager ng Linux or GUI kung tawagin sa Linux. Ito yung pag nag-open ka ng folder, nag-drag and, nag and drop ka ng settings, at kung ano-ano pa. Next natin ay yung mga applications. Yan yung mga gagamitin mo like Uh, operate, oh, office apps, text editors, uh, ikaw, ano pong mga classic applications na pwede mong gawin. Yan. Next natin naman ay yung kernel. Ano nga ba ang kernel? Uh, ang kernel, so, sa madaling salita, siya yung pinaka brain at heart. Siya yung nakikapag-usap sa operating systems. Kumbaga, siya yung lahat, nasa kanya lahat ng connections using shell. So, kernel is yung Linux mismo. May iba pang tawag dun sa OS na yun. Eh. Uh, kung tawagan ito ay GNU or GNU. Yan. So, tandaan nyo ha. Ah, ang kernel, hindi yan yung police o yung sundalo. Yung kernel, yan yung mismong Linux. Okay? <laughs> sa next clip natin, i-explain dito kung ano nga ba ang open source? Please watch. 
Hi, I'm Jonas. Do you know what open source is? Well, let me explain it for you. Basically, it means that the recipe of any given work is shared and free for anybody to use. Let me take you back where it all started. In the 1980s, a guy named Richard Stallman had a problem with the software in his printer. He could fix the printer himself, but unfortunately, he was not allowed to get inside the black box by the manufacturer. This frustration was the beginning of the free and open source movement. The essential benefits of open source are access to the source or recipe of any given work, free remix and redistribution of any given work, an end to predatory vendor lock-in, and a higher degree of cooperation. Open source is originally a software-related term, but let's take a non-technical example of where the open source mindset is actually used today. Here's Dave. He is a really passionate skateboarder. He loves the community because everyone shares tips and tricks openly. This means that everybody has access to the source of becoming a better skateboarder. Dave has the opportunity of remixing an existing trick and making it even better. He becomes more skilled, faster. If Dave's skateboard breaks, he doesn't necessarily have to go back to the vendor to get it fixed. He can also fix it himself with the help of one of his friends from the community. This is because the design of the skateboard is open source. In the skateboard community, you share new ideas and remix each other's tricks. You cooperate and reach much higher standards than any skateboarder could reach alone. Now let's take another example. Here's Susan and Michael. They have just bought a new property and now need a new house. John is an open source architect and offers three designs that Susan and Michael can base their dream house on. They choose option A because it best fits their needs. But Susan wants a conservatory as well, so Michael draws one and adds that as an extension to their chosen house design, option A. Susan and Michael choose company A to help build the house. It should be easy for company A to build it because the architectural drawings and guidelines are already produced by John, the open source architect. But during the process, Susan and Michael find out that company A's employees are very slow and not very polite. They therefore get company B to finish the work. It's easy for company B to take over the project because everything is openly documented. Fortunately, company B does an amazing job of completing the construction project. In the meantime, Coco and June have shared a new solar cell design as an extension to option A as well. Susan and Michael also decide to add that to their home. Susan and Michael are now happy owners of a beautiful and customized new home. But John is also happy. He can now add two new extensions to his professional portfolio without having done anything himself. So now I've given you a taste of some of the many benefits of open source. But before I leave you, I have to put an end to some of the myths that still exist. First, you have no control of your work. That's not true. As the initiator, John, the open source architect, verifies extensions and chooses what can be added to his specific project and therefore also decides where the project is heading. Second, open equals unsafe. Not true. In an open source project, many people are involved and cooperate to make an even safer product and to keep unauthorized people out. And third, everything is free. No, the source itself is free and publicly available, but the house must, for example, still be built, customized, maintained, and provided with water, power, and heat. Hopefully you can now better understand the positive term open source and the principles within. Please start opening up and use the extreme beneficial principles the way they deserve. As mentioned, my name is Jonas and I'm representing Bit Blueprint. We have, in collaboration with Moving Monday, made this video to help scale the positive principles within the open source paradigm. We have, of course, made this video free for everyone to use, modify, and share. So feel free to do that. Thanks for watching. So sa madaling sabi, ang open source ay makukuha mo na libre at may freedom ka na gawin at baguhin ulit ang recipe. For example, uh, binigyan kita ng sisig, nasarapan ka sa sisig ko at gusto mo rin gumawa ng sisig. Mabibigay ko sa iyo yung recipe ng sisig at pwede mo pa siyang 
dagdagan ng iba't ibang ingredients. Ganon. Okay? Another example is yung Red Hat versus CentOS. Yung Red Hat tsaka CentOS ay parehas ng source. Pinagkaiba nila uh, may iba't ibang software si Red Hat na wala kay CentOS which yun nang sinusuport ni Red Hat. So, yun yung sinusubscribe mo kay Red Hat. Yung support. Kasi si CentOS ay community based lang. Hindi ka pwedeng tumawag kay Red Hat pag may sira yung CentOS mo dahil kay Red Hat ka naka-subscribe. Okay? So, sa next clip naman natin ngayon ay ang brief history ng Linux at si Linus Torvalds. Please watch. Our story begins 20 years ago. Boris Yeltsin was sworn into office. Jay Leno replaced Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. And cell phones were really, really big. It was August of 1991, and a 20-year-old computer science student named Linus Torvalds sat down at his computer in Helsinki to post what is now one of the most famous entries in computing history. Hello, everybody out there. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby. Won't be anything big and professional like GNU. It probably will never support anything other than AT hard disks, as that's all I have. Well, word of Linux open source project quickly spread around the globe, and developers from all over contributed their code. Linus named his OS kernel Linux and chose a penguin as its mascot after a little incident at the zoo. He soon made a very important decision that would shape Linux's future just as much as the technology. He chose the GPL license created by a visionary named Richard Stallman. The Linux kernel, along with the GPL license and other GNU components, revolutionized the computing industry with a few very simple yet very important freedoms. The freedom to use the software for any purpose the freedom to change the software to suit your needs, the freedom to share the software with your friends and neighbors, and the freedom to share the changes you make. These radical ideas fueled its spread around the world and somewhat paradoxically, its rise from a hobbyist experiment to the foundation of a large and thriving commercial ecosystem. Companies built businesses around Linux. In 1999, Red Hat's stock crippled as it became the first Linux company to go public. That same year, IBM spent a billion dollars to improve and advertise Linux. Does he have a name? His name is Linux. Soon, Linux was knocking out industry heavyweights and fueling the rise of the Internet with its free software. In short, Linux revolutionized computing. But whenever something is this disruptive, there's bound to be competitive crossfire. But Linux not only survived, it thrived. Today, the kernel development community numbers in the thousands, with hundreds of companies collaborating on Linux development. Every three months, another version of Linux is released. So, where is Linux today? Running in 75% of stock exchanges worldwide, and powering the servers that deliver Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, eBay, and Google. You use Linux literally every time you surf the internet. It's in your phone, in your TV, running 95% of supercomputers, and in many of the devices you use every day. Linux is everywhere. And the Helsinki-based programmer who started it all? He orchestrates this worldwide army of developers from his home office in Portland, Oregon, as a fellow at the Linux Foundation. As we celebrate 20 years of Linux, we can all see ourselves in its story. Thank you for being a part of its first 20 years.
so this is my working space. I've been using a walking desk for the last three or four months now. I'm not sure how much it does for me, but uh, I'm sure it's healthier than just sitting down. I'm also trying to keep my desk clean because if you pan over to my old desk, which I don't actually use anymore because it got so filled with crap, um, I don't know what to do about this anymore. I need to burn it down someday. I used to work night times, uh, but then I got kids and the kids go to school. And that means that we had to wake up at 7.30 or so to take the kids to school. It's not exactly a nine to five job, but it is actually fairly close. And you can see that in, in the commit logs. It's interesting. I sometimes do statistics of how, which time zones people are and what, what time people are working at. And these days, you can definitely tell that a lot of people are, are actually keeping pretty regular hours. I'm, I'm not the only one with kids, clearly. It's set at a very slow speed. I call it my zombie shuffling desk, because if I put it at any faster than one mile an hour, my mouse movements get very erratic and I no longer can close my windows. I only have a web browser, which is how I read email, and a couple of terminal windows open, which is where I end up doing my Git pulls and, uh, and any coding, although the coding part is not that common anymore. In between emails, I end up reading various tech sites and, and sometimes not so tech sites, depending on what's going on. I'm gonna stop this because I'm having, I'm having a hard time walking sideways. So this guy, I was actually really hoping that the kids would find interesting because when I grew up, if I had had something like this, I would have been all over it. And uh, my oldest has actually been using this for school projects and things like that. Uh, so it has gotten some use. I'd like to say that all this is priced possessions, but it's actually just garbage. I'm just not very emotional when it comes to technology. So all technology is just old and broken and I, I'd much rather play with the new stuff. When I get new technology, which happens quite often, I don't want to throw the hard disks out. So I literally have this pile of hard disks that have accumulated over the last 15 years. And I, I'm supposed to wipe them or use a hammer on them to, and then throw them out, but I'm just too lazy. Usually the view looks like this because I don't want the sun to come in and disturb me. So uh, this time of year, it's not as distracting, but in a couple of months, I will have that closed completely because I do not want to see outside. And then you have various scuba equipment. There's two cameras there. There's a pair of scuba fins and my regulator in the other corner. For some reason, people keep sending me penguins. Uh, and we have a lot more than these, but we ended up basically giving away the duplicates. So these are mostly unique. Thank you for watching. I hope you're kayo and see you sa next video.